So the church music industry has turned into complete trash over the past few years. And it's all because church musicians are doing this particular thing that's ruining the entire industry. But that one thing may not be what you think. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about this problem and show you exactly what you need to be doing to fix it. Now this is a really big problem and I'm gonna break it down for you and then I'm gonna give you five ways to fix it. And I promise you, if you apply what I'm about to show you, your issues as a church musician from getting paid right and not even being respected will stop. So imagine you're at the top of your game as a musician, like you're highly skilled, you're highly respected, people love you, you have a solid social media following and you're making the money you want. Now, let me ask you a question. Off the top of your head, what are the things or the attributes that you possessed that help you get to that point? Go ahead, I'll give you a few seconds. Now, I'm willing to bet that you thought of things like hard work and perseverance and consistency, right? Now, I'm also willing to bet that when thinking about the things that help you get to that point, nowhere in your mind were terms like jealousy and envy and insecurity or resentment, right? And that's because you intuitively know that those things won't get you to success. And yet, these particular things are the things that church musicians are spending time doing on a daily basis. They spend hours and hours on social media every day looking at other musicians and becoming jealous and envious of them, so much so that they've developed insecurities around their own skills. And I'll get back to this social media thing in a minute, but what I'm talking about here is the biggest killer of creativity, and it is the biggest thing that is driving the church musician industry and the church music industry down the toilet. And that thing is comparison. And I'll tell you something about comparison that you already know. It's stupid. Imagine comparing your entire life's journey and who you are and who you've become to a 30 second clip on Instagram. Imagine your self-esteem and your self-worth and who you are as a person all being diminished over someone that you don't even know. And because church musicians do this on almost a daily basis, as I said, there's hardly any authenticity, hardly any creativity, any loyalty, or even friendship or respect in the church music industry anymore. Instead, what we have is a bunch of copycat, overplaying, cutthroat musicians that talk about other musicians behind their backs. And to illustrate this, I'll share with you a personal story that happened to me some years ago. So I was playing for this evening service Service, right and I think it was like an anniversary service or something and we kind of know how those evening services work basically the host churches musicians and singers are up first and they perform first and then mid-service there's a transition where the guest church that's there their speaker or pastor or whatever comes up and then the musicians from the guest church and their singers come up to perform as well right and generally it's a customary thing that when that transition happens you know, the guest church's musicians come up and then they speak to the host church's musicians and just say something like, hey, how you doing? Hey, you guys sounded great. Or my name is such and such, just a greeting, right? Now, before that transition happened, I'm up playing for the host church's choir. And it's one of those times where like the audience was really into what we were doing. Like they were standing up and they were clapping and all of this kind of stuff. And I look out at the audience because I can see like kind of out of the corner of my eye, I look out and see the guest musician is like really frowning, like he has this scowl on his face for some reason. So we get to the point in the service where the transition happens and this guy is still frowning. So he walks up with his group of singers and other musicians and he's standing behind me, right? Like still frowning. And I'm like, like what's wrong with this dude? So when me and my team finished, I got up off the organ and I'm expecting this guy to say, hey, how you doing or whatever. He just jumps on the organ and doesn't even speak. And I'm like, okay. So I didn't take it personally or anything. I just thought it was kind of weird. So as a courtesy from me, I lean in to tell him two things. Now, the first one is I have a keyboard on top of the organ that I sometimes double stack on the organ. So I'm leaning in to tell him that if he wants to use the keyboard, I can set it to whatever sound he wants it on so that he could use it, right? Now, before I tell you the second thing I was gonna tell him, let me tell you what his response was to the first thing I said. He's still scowling, right? And he leans over and says, this organ is trash. Who made this? I can't even hear myself on it. Like, ugh. 
Like, yeah, he was one of those kind of dudes. Now, what's funny is the second thing I was gonna tell him is that if he wanted more volume from the organ, I could turn the Leslie speaker up for him because I usually keep it down or low at volume for myself because it sits right next to the organ, right next to my ear, and I don't like it screaming in my ear. And so I literally just responded to him and said, well, man, you don't like it. You should have brought your own organ then. And I just walked away. Now, the story is kind of crazy, but I tell you this because it illustrates the type of disrespect that a lot of other musicians have for other musicians. And it's crazy because I had never met this dude in my life. I'd never seen him before. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. So it was just like, why are you being like that? And I also tell you this story to show you just how the things I'm saying, like the jealousy, the envy and comparison and resentment and all of that just runs rampant for no particular reason in the church music industry and it really needs to stop. And so here are five quick and easy ways to change it. And right before we get into that, if you're getting value out of this video or if you've gotten value from any of the videos here on my channel, do me a quick favor and like this video. It really helps out with everything we're doing here on the channel and it lets me know that you appreciate the content. So first, you need to understand that there are musicians out there who are better than you who are more skilled than you, who have better gear than you, who are more talented than you and all of that. And that's always going to be the case. And this can be for several reasons, but whatever the reason is, it's okay. You don't have to feel threatened or intimidated by this. So when you see these musicians who may be better than you on social media or wherever, study their techniques and strategies and skills and creative processes and adopt them and make them your own. Use what you see from them as a source of inspiration and education. So the first thing you wanna do is focus on learning from them rather than comparing yourself to them. And this will cut out all of that envy and jealousy stuff that we've been talking about. Now next, you need to know that a big part of success is rejecting all of these norms and expectations that society, and in this case, other musicians may be trying to put on you because no musician ever has become successful by conforming to other people's expectations of them. And this is the thing that causes so much of that resentment that I've been talking about because you're meant to be the captain of your own ship, so to speak, not letting someone else captain it for you. So to cut down on the comparison and jealousy and envy and all of that, what you need to do is define your own goals and your own success rather than letting other people define them for you. Now, this next one is going to be really difficult for so many musicians, but you really want to understand that social media is doing massive damage to you, whether you know it or not. It's no secret at all, and these platforms have said it themselves, that they've hired the best psychologists and sociologists from around the world to come in and help them write algorithms for these platforms that help keep you addicted to them. And we know that what happens on these platforms is quite a bit of the bad stuff that we've been talking about, a lot of the comparison and envy and jealousy and resentment. And guess what happens when you expose yourself to that for hours and hours on end every day? You become affected and infected by it. And to be clear, I'm not throwing shade at social media at all. I'm on social media and I use it too. I'm just saying we need to recognize it for what it is. So if you wanna cut down on all of the comparison and envy and all of that, you really need to limit your time on social media. And also, you need to stop selling yourself short. No matter where you are in your journey, you're learning and growing and you're acquiring skills and all of that, and that's good. You've made some considerable progress and that's nothing that should be just shoved aside. You may not be where you wanna be in your musical journey, and you may even feel like you still have so much to learn and a long way to go, but your current status is worthy of admiration. So this tip is, instead of comparing yourself to other people and their journey, celebrate your own progress and where you are and how far you've come. Now this next thing is going to be the biggest thing in not only getting rid of comparison and jealousy and all of that, but also the biggest thing in helping you get to where you want to be. So what happens is a lot of times musicians get stuck in a rut. And because of this, they don't grow, or if they grow at all, 
it's very, very slowly. And because of this, they quickly become outdated. And at the point to where they start to see and feel that they're becoming outdated is the point to where they start to compare themselves to others who are progressing or who may be further along than them. So the trick here is you have to keep adding to yourself and becoming more. And of course, I'm talking about musically, but I'm also talking about adding other things and other skills, other related skills to yourself so that you become a better person overall. Basically, you need to consistently and continually focus on becoming more valuable. And this brings me to another really big problem with church musicians. And it may even be bigger than the issues that I mentioned here. And you definitely want to avoid it. And how can you avoid it? Well, first you go here now and check out this video where I talk about this problem and show you exactly how to fix it. And once you do, I promise you, you will be on your way to success.